Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and I'm going to be playing with the Mythical Beast deck yet again. I'm not playing with the Supreme King version, that'll come in some later videos, um, because I'm still tweaking some things around as far as ratios, how many cards I want to be playing in the deck, and stuff like that. But this list is pretty much as, like, as established as it's going to be. I, I believe the Supreme King list to be superior, but... Uh, this is basically the best list I could play for the purpose of this video because this video is going to be testing this deck against the Trickstar matchup, which, funnily enough, the Supreme King version actually has a much harder time versus Trickstar than this version does because mainly the inclusion of Triple Arch Phoenix Centric, uh, the Abductor that you can normal summon and have it gain counters to be a beater in simplified game states, uh, things like that. It actually does come up quite significantly. Um, especially considering that most Trickster decks are playing things like, you know, Droll and Locks and stuff like that. And you just get, like, hard shut out by Droll and Lock on, uh, on your, uh, Dark Worm and stuff like that if you're playing a Supreme King build. So, I decided to play this build for the video today because, honestly, it has the better matchup against Tricksters. Uh, it's just not something, it's not a favorable matchup at all. It's, it's always the most irritating matchup, uh, to test with any deck is the Trickster matchup. Because sometimes you just have it and sometimes you just don't. It just all really depends on your opponent, but at the same time, like, the deck isn't good enough to out-establish boards, so if you go first and establish a big board, Trickstars usually have a hard enough time dealing with that, uh, and especially with this deck as well, since it has a built-in out to Eater of Millions, or two built-in outs, uh, in the form of just popping it with Arch Phoenix Centric, um, three built-in outs, actually, now that I think about it, you can either pop it with Arch Phoenix Centric, you can negate its effect at the start of the damage step with King Jackal, or you can, uh, just bounce it, uh, when, uh, when they summon it with Garuda, but at the same time that they just summon it again, all you do with that, all you do with that is basically make them waste resources. But if they put a lot of stuff into summoning it, if they mess up and just put like their entire extra deck into it, and then you bounce it with Garuda, then they have to start taking away cards out of their hand, and they might not be able to drop it again. Uh, so there's things like that that are, you know, they don't sound like they would come up, but they do. Uh, but basically, that is all that I really have to say for this. Uh, let's do some games. Let's do five games and see how this deck does. Uh, on camera against the Trickstar matchup, but I'm not expecting anything monumentous, but we'll see. Let's jump straight into the first game, shall we? Alright, so going into the first game, I'm playing against my friend who's been playing Trickstars for a little while, although he's not super well-versed with the deck, although there's not really that much to mess up. Uh, but regardless, it's, it's very much an uphill battle for me because the Mythical Beast deck just struggles with hand traps. As I touched upon in the previous video against Pendulum Magicians, if you, you watched that video and got all the way to the end, you know that Ash Blossom pretty much cucks the entirety of this deck because if you get hit on a key a like card with Ash Blossom, like Master Cerberus' Pendulum Effect or something like that, it can quite literally end your entire turn because you get stuck with cards in scale and stuff like that. So. I get ashed on my Toon Table of Contents, so I'm not able to do, you know, nearly as much as what I would have previously been able to do. Uh, and so, all I'm able to do is just drop a, uh, a King Jackal and hope that uh, and hope that it's enough to deal with my opponent's stuff. Uh, but essentially, it just doesn't end up being enough. I get a hit in with it, but he sets Psalm Strike to out it with Eater of Millions. Because he gets to attack with Eater of Millions, trigger its effect, then I'll negate with King Jackal's effect, and then he strikes me. So, there's not really much that I can do. And... Because he ashed my Toon Table, it was either pass with an open board or just kind of floodgate myself by playing two scales and just hoping for the best, hoping that maybe he was, you know, not going to uh, read my cards that, you know, well and pop one of my scales so that I can then, you know, just deal with, I can just, you know, have taken a card away from him and then play the rest of the game. But he basically has a Cosmic Cyclone that he just keeps set the entire game because he read my one scale that I put up and he's like, ah, this has to be the only card. So... This game plan could have potentially worked a little bit better had I drawn more spell cards. I was really trying to, you know, bank on putting more spells into my hand as the game progressed. But unfortunately, I just kept drawing monsters like Ash Blossom, King Cerberuses, and stuff like that. Um, so I wasn't really able to mount any sort of offensive in this game, unfortunately. Considering that I started out with the King Jackal and just tried to ride it, it was, it was one of those things where my hand sucked and once I got Ash Blossomed and I had to just try and go for the win in whatever way possible. I had to try and get lucky. Essentially, sometimes you just gotta get lucky. Sometimes it's just how Yu-Gi-Oh! goes. But anyway, going into the second game, my hand is not any real better than it was before, but I do have access to King Jackal, uh, or Master Cerberus rather, which gets me Jackal, which then allows me to go into King Jackal from deck in a much more economical way than I did previously. So, I'm able to get my Jackal, summon it, do Toon Table, Toon Table. Unfortunately, I drew one of my Toon Tables, so like, 
that was a brick card in my hand. If that card had been anything else, my ceiling could have been potentially a little bit higher. But so now I'm basically just on King Jackal with counters. I put the Arch Phoenix Centric in my scale so it gives King Jackal counters so that I can potentially negate a card. Basically, the only card I'm really worried about negating would be a card that would out my monster. Uh, AKA like Eater of Millions, uh, but it turns out that me just instinctively summoning Jackal in that position underneath one of the extra monster zones ended up being a very big mistake because he was able to do a double Licorice play with Eater of Millions to make a Decode Talker to just attack straight over it because Decode Talker was getting the boost and then he ends up, you know, just not being able to have, he doesn't have to worry about anything that I'm doing because I just pop a back row with Archfiend Eccentric and then I normal summon an Archfiend that I drew um, or that I already had, had in my hand that I had drawn in my opening hand that was just a duplicate and then I pop his decode talker while I have the chance to but he's able to follow up with an in-phase scapegoat plus I know he has a candina in his hand because it got bounced last turn there's just not really a lot that I'm capable of doing this game unfortunately this mythical beast deck it operates very well when it you know draws a nice varied hand but unfortunately a lot of the cards in this deck are very tailored towards the gimmick that the deck operates around which is the spell counter nonsense so unfortunately there's you know there are those hands that you draw that really just do not mesh well but pretty much any hand with grinder golem in it plus two monsters is a very good hand as well like you can play through uh, you can play through an ash do things you can do summon sorcerers plays skull deep plays pretty much do whatever you want and that's what you see here in the third game i get to start uh, I've already, I'm already down two games, so at this point I've already been 2-0'd, uh, but we play five games on these videos regardless. Uh, and so I'm able to do a Grinder Golem play, and I end up calling Master Cerberus right with Akashic Magician. So I get Master Cerberus to my hand, but then I get hit with Droll and Lock, so I can't even use the Master Cerberus effectively. So go to plan B, which is to do a Summon Sorcerer's play instead of the Skull Deep play, and end up with putting you know, Master Cerberus on my field via the Firewall Dragon's effect. And just going from there so having access to getting king jackal that i milled off my akashic magician back to my hand with firewall uh, and then being able to you know go into jackal out of my extra deck with king jackal activating enough spells to get king ja uh, to get jackal to tribute off for king jackal and still be live and then i'm able to banish the grinder golem with master cerberus and i've got two firewalls that are used on the field but it, it's still pretty fine now if I hadn't gotten drolled that previous turn, I had a plays going into potentially Skull Deed. I could have gone into Heavy Metal Bows Electrum to do some cool uh, Astrograph Sorcerer plays. There was a really large amount of plays that you have access to whenever you have access to Grinder Golem, plus at least one Spellcaster Pendulum monster, uh, because of what Summon Sorceress allows for this deck. Now, obviously that's not confirmed for the TCG yet as far as Extreme Force is concerned, but you, you kind of have to play with everything at your you know disposal when you're trying to make a deck that's inherently handicapped like this one good. It's, it's the unfortunate thing. I tried to play it TCG legal for the longest time and it just could not compete. Uh, but so, as you can see here, I'm just playing around cards like his reincarnation. I'm playing into his board trying to kill all the scapegoat tokens, banish a token with Master Cerberus, banish his Licorice with Master Cerberus, uh, the other one, and then I'm just able to uh, just attack with six monsters on my field uh, for game. He had a reincarnation in his grave that was live, but he just chose not to activate it uh, because I guess his hand just wasn't good enough to win the game against six monsters anyway because Tricksters already has problems dealing with that many monsters, and I guess he just gave up. He just did not want to try and deal with it. Either that or he missed the prompt, because Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro is sometimes like that. If you're not holding down A, even though the card could activate, it's just like, nah, you haven't done it yet, so you probably don't want to, right? But anyway, so now my opponent is going first, for the first time in this set of games, and that actually just terrifies me. So, he opens with Double Licorice, plus a Search Reincarnation that I know is there, so I try to play around it uh, by setting two cards out of my hand and then playing Archfiend. Uh, but I end up getting hit with a Cosmic Cyclone on my Toon Table of Contents, which actually is kind of real. That's actually ridiculous. Uh, it was definitely something that just hurt way too much. Uh, because if that Toon Table had stayed, if he had hit the other back row, the other back row was a Pendulum Paradox, I believe, if I remember right. It's either Pendulum Paradox or Duelist Alliance, one of the two. I think it's Pendulum Paradox. If he had not hit the Toon Table, I could have, you know, flipped Toon Table, gotten more draw, uh, gotten uh, cards out of my deck with, uh, with I could have put in Demon on the board, put Abductor in my scale, went into a uh, Jackal because I would have been able to put three counters on Abductor, I could have searched Jackal, summoned it, gone into either Master Cerberus or uh, King Jackal and it would have been really good for me, but at this point, like, my hand just can't, you know, cope with the losses that I've taken, um, and like, I've already normal summoned, he 
played very smart with his Licorices and put them both under the extra Monster Zone so that I couldn't do a Grinder Golem play, even though I did draw Grinder Golem off Reincarnation. It was not a play that was available to me. So ultimately, like he just played this really well, and then he has the uh, he has access to the uh, Holy Angel Lily Bell play, where this is legitimately like 8,000 plus damage by itself, where you just ba you just keep uh, you know bouncing for Licorices and stuff, and you keep summoning to the zones that Holy Angel has, and at that burns that makes that bigger, and it just it's it's always like 8,000 damage. You have to be able to make you have to be able to make Holy Angel. Uh, and then summon uh, Licorice in that. So anyway, going into game 5, I open with a Grinder Golem combo going first, and my opponent doesn't have Ghost Ogre for it, even though Ghost Ogre is in the list that I'm playing against, so... Whew, good for me, right? <laughs> like, the only thing that my deck has a chance of playing and doing well with is Grinder Golem. The only game that I've won so far is because of Grinder Golem allowing me to just put a lot of cards onto the board, which is inherently very good in this matchup. But so, I go for the Summon Sorceress play, um, I've got a bunch of surplus pendulums in my hand that I can utilize. I've got an astrograph in my hand as well. The neat thing about summon sorcerers is that it doesn't have a level restriction of what it summons from your deck. So you summon master servers from your deck off of it, and then you're able to basically just search for it uh, by adding it back to hand with heavy metal foes electrum because you have two other pendulums on the field. So it was a really cool play that I had access to here, and it was it was actually just really cool. I really liked it. Uh, but I end up getting drolled again, so it does hinder the performance that I'm capable of doing. But I do get to have a firewall that's just loaded and ready to go, meaning that I can make my opponent, you know, commit to his battle phase, and then bounce Grinder Golem to my hands, um, and it's, it's just really good in that regard, right? Uh, but so I scale up twice. I'm trying to play around reincarnation with the Master Servers and the Jackal. Um, so I scale up two, even though that means that I'm not going to be able to do anything with their Pendulum effects this turn. Uh, but I'm not expecting there to be a Solemn Strike set because I don't have any knowledge of it. So he strikes my Heavy Metal Foes Electrum, which prevents me from blowing up one of my scales. But that's fine. I'm, I'm ahead in card advantage. I'm, a, I'm in the lead card advantage-wise. Um, and all I need to do is draw into any monster that I can summon. Um, that you know I could play Duelist Alliance. I could draw into Pendulum Paradox, which is what I ended up drawing into. Or I could draw into just any of my uh, level 4 or lower Pendulum monsters to summon and make another Heavy Metal Foes Electrum to pop a card. And my opponent has a warning set, which he didn't use on my pre-existing Firewall Dragon when he reincarnationed. Uh, when I triggered my Firewall Dragon's effect off of him striking uh, Electromite, he could have warning my Firewall, but instead he flipped Reincarnation to try and, you know, make me draw into two spells that can't be summoned off Firewall, but I had drawn into the Abductor, so that got summoned. But then I hit him down to where he was not low and uh, not high enough to use the warning, and so I basically have free reign of the entire uh, turn structure. Although I have no idea that's a warning face down. Um, I'm just trying to respect it as if it's like another copy of Reincarnation or something like that. But it doesn't seem to be too valuable if it hasn't been flipped by this point. So I just start going into you know a bunch of resources and basically unbrick myself by getting a card out of my scale with Electromite, and then I'm just able to just do everything with the Master Cerberus that's still there, and all that sort of stuff to get me into a nice, healthy game shot over his already pretty, like, insignificant resource pool. He didn't have much to go on there because of the fact that, like, his Light Stage got ashed, so he didn't have access to Candina, uh, didn't have access to any, like, just established searchers. Like, once the Light Stage got ashed, he didn't have anything other than the Licorice, and that was not going to carry him against two Firewall Dragons that were already pre-existing, plus an Electromite, especially since he only has one strike set. The warning isn't going to really do anything um, if I hit him low enough, which is what ended up happening, and all that sort of nonsense. So, anyway, it's, just, it's not a very good matchup. But then again, who has actually a good matchup against Trickster? I don't understand. Like, that Reincarnation just absolutely destroys so many decks and strategies, if played correctly. And if the deck draws well, like... It's arguably one of like the only like auto win decks in the format because if it draws well enough, you just like reincarnation droll them, or you can just reincarnation them and it really just hinders them completely. Like this deck, for example, if you pop with Master Cerberus to get a search and then they reincarnation you, that really sucks because like you know the reincarnation's there, so you can't search for like King Jackal because you want to maximize your chances of drawing into it. Uh, off the reincarnation, but at the same time you have to search something that's valuable enough for them to think that they need to reincarnation you there. There's there's so many different things that, you know, all amalgamate into making this matchup so irritating, specifically for this deck, and it's just, it's even harder with the Supreme King version, because you just, sure you have access to Dark Worm and stuff, but Dark Worm gets, you know, it triggers the Droll and Lock really early in your turn, um... It, uh, you get reincarnation for uh, for like the scale that you search, and now your entire deck 
is a worse version of this deck that I played because your high scale or your low scale just got banished. So now you don't have access to Magical Abductors or uh, Arch Phoenix Centrics because you made room for the Supreme King engine. But now you also don't have access to the Supreme King engine because your scale that you searched got banished. So it just it, there's a bunch of different things to factor into making this just a horrible matchup. But it's one of those things you need to test because if you're going to be trying to play this deck in any capacity online or at events or at locals casually or whatever, you need to understand the deck's strengths and weaknesses and what matchups are favorable and not favorable. And this matchup, 100% not favorable for you if you're playing Mythical Beasts against Tricksters. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As per always, links as always are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like what I'm doing here and want to support the channel and help keep this sort of nonsense going in the way that it's been going so far, then Patreon is the best way to do so. And you'd have my eternal gratitude if that's something you wanted to go check out and maybe contribute to to support something that you like. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe as you always do, the usual nonsense. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video, and have an awesome day, you guys. But now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else supporting in the lower tiers. You guys help make what I'm doing here continue to be possible. You have my eternal gratitude, as always, and you're forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.